Have you ever heard of the names Euodia and Syntyche? Uh, unusual names, aren't they? But they're in the Bible. And we only have a couple of verses uh, that tell us about them. Uh, I'd like for you to listen to what the Bible has to say about these two ladies. This is Philippians chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. I entreat you, Odia, and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. So who are Odia and Syntyche? Um, I think we have read some things here. Well, we can make some assumptions. An assumption that I see uh, is that they're good women. Uh, and the reason I believe they're good women is they've worked with Paul uh, in Christian efforts. He said they've worked side by side with him along with Clement and other workers. So I think they're good women because they worked with Paul. I think we can make an assumption that they love the Lord in a time when being a Christian was controversial. Probably wasn't easy. So I have to have a favorable impression of these women. I think they're good, um, but they're disagreeing. And we don't know what the disagreement was on, but there are some things I find about the little information that we have that's really intriguing to me. You know, when Paul dealt with issues, he was not afraid to take a side. Uh, if it came to a doctrinal issue or uh, a clear cut moral issue, Paul was not hesitant at all in taking sides. He would do so very firmly and convincingly. Paul's not taking a side here. Huh. Have to be careful, but I, I, I don't know what to make of that. Some have suggested that it could be something petty. And I guess that's possible. All of us can pout over petty little differences. So that's, that's possible. It could also be something rather hefty, like a, a large ethical dilemma without a huge clear-cut answer. That's possible too. We go through those, don't we? I think we're going through that right now with the whole discussion of masks. Moral concerns on both sides. Safety is a moral concern. Uh, what is perceived to be excessive control is also a moral concern. What do you do? Well, Paul, his advice is that they agree in the Lord. So what does that mean? It doesn't say explicitly. All I can do is share with you my impression. My impression is that he's not told them necessarily to, uh, for one woman to convince the other woman that she's right. I'm not sure that's it. You know, in teaching conflict resolution, we have a saying that the goal in conflict resolution isn't always for one person to prove the other person wrong and that they are right. The goal in conflict resolution is for love to win. And of course, there are absolute truths that have to be defended. But I wonder if Paul isn't saying here that for Euodia and Syntyche, the goal is not for one to prove the other wrong or right. Perhaps the goal is for love to win. Maybe that's what agreeing in the Lord means. Perhaps agreeing in the Lord means uh, something along the lines of, we're agreeing that we are Christians and we're not going to let something else like this separate us. Even if it's an important issue, being in the Lord and agreeing that we are all in the Lord really is something special. It means we are a part of the world's greatest community. And we're not going to let other things as important or it may be even petty as they may be 
shatter the bond that we have in Jesus Christ. I know in, in couples counseling, I have used the let love win motif several times. And you might ask, how did they do it? Well, you know, they just found a way to make it happen. They found a way to agree in their marriage, like we strive to find a way to agree in the Lord. They just found a way to make it happen. It usually involved quite a bit of sacrifice for both of them, but they agreed in their marriage. So let's, let's challenge ourselves to agree in the Lord. Take a moment and think of a fellow Christian that you think you may have a disagreement with. Now I want you to ask yourself, just how much do you love them? Does that seem like it might take a little effort? It's okay if it does. After all, love is not for lazy people. There's nothing that says agreeing in the Lord is necessarily easy. But this is what Paul tells us. And if you look at the linguistics of the way he says this, at minimum, Paul is offering very strong, sound advice. But he also could be issuing a direct command. Either way, the tr uh, words agree in the Lord need to be taken very seriously by us. Let's remember how special it is to be in this Christian community. And let's agree in that. And let's allow that to be larger than any other disagreements that we may have. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much that we are in you. And we realize we're not going to agree on everything. And while some things are absolute, others are not. And we ask your help in guiding us uh, as to the best way to achieve solutions. But Lord, we also ask you to help us to realize that we're in the Lord, we're in you. And we can agree on that. And that can be our greatest agenda and should be. Thank you for making this possible in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hope you guys have a great afternoon. Take care. Love you. God bless.